Mould. We've all seen it or heard of it. Some of us live with it. But just how does it move into our cosy homes? Dampness is how. Most homes suffer from dampness. The most common type is condensation. Look, there's some. Mould loves it when there's condensation around. It sits on your walls and ceilings and changes the colour of your decor to a black or green colour. Pretty disgusting stuff. It forms on or around your windows and external walls. It even manages to get behind those tight spots. Take a look behind your wardrobe. Yeah, there's some. In severe cases, it can be found in your cupboards trying to damage your clothes and stuff. So it's not very pretty, but apart from that, what's the big deal? Well, more can release spores that easily spread into our lungs or elsewhere in our homes. And some people may be prone to allergens. It can cause coughing, sneezing, wheezing, as well as some pretty major health problems. Children can also be particularly sensitive to the poor little lambs. But what is condensation? Well, air in our homes contains water. What? Yes, tiny droplets of water that you can't see. We call this water vapour. If you have too much water vapour, it can cause condensation and encourage mould growth. So when you see it, it's a bit of a blatant warning you have high levels of water in the air. This water vapour is mighty friendly with dust mites. They just love each other in that humid environment. And the more they love each other, the more dust mites you'll have. Dust mites can also be very problematic to health. So how do we resolve these issues? Luckily, there are some remedies to tackling mould. However, it's not completely straightforward. Here we go. Heating and ventilation. In a nutshell, a combination of correct heating, ventilating and a few lifestyle changes can give you a healthier home. Heating and ventilating can be challenging, especially when conserving energy. However, it is possible to minimise condensation problems through proper ventilation without excess heat loss. Hmm, look at this scene. Scene familiar? Pets also contribute to levels of moisture and not for the better. When cooking, put on pan lids and close the internal kitchen door. Open a window and if you have an extractor fan, put it on. Bathing can cause a lot of water vapour, so keep the door closed when having a bath or a shower and again, put on the extractor fan. When you've finished, leave the door closed and open the window. The humidistat fan is recommended as it operates when it detects a certain amount of humidity in the air. If you don't have one, go hunting for an electrician who will give you some advice. Try to avoid drying clothes on radiators. It causes rapid increase in water vapour. Instead, dry them on a line outside, or if this isn't possible, use a clothes stand in a well-ventilated room. What about tumble dryers? Ideally, tumble dryers ought to be located in outside buildings or away from habitable parts of your home and installed in accordance with the manufacturer's guidelines. Heating. It's really important to heat your home correctly because cool rooms attract the most condensation. Rooms that are not used often should have heating at a low but consistent temperature. Here's a tip. You can install thermostatic radiator valves to radiators which better control the heating whilst saving you money. Finally, insulation. It's a great way of keeping a house warm, saving energy and discouraging condensation. Loft should ideally contain 270mm of mineral wool fibre. Draft proof around badly fitting doors and timber windows. For all fireplaces, get some chimney balloons to keep the heat in. Install wall insulation in your wall cavity, or if your walls are old and don't have cavities, you can insulate on the inside or the outside, or both. Getting rid of mould should be done carefully and in some cases by a professional, and it might look a bit weird, but be sure to wear gloves, a mask and goggles when removing it. OK, in summary, in order to prevent mould from forming, you need to heat, ventilate and insulate. So, hopefully that's given you all of the information you need to live happily ever after. Um, well, at least in a mould-free home. For more information on such mouldy matters, please speak to your local environmental health professional. If you've enjoyed watching this, please watch it again.